Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos. We are taking a deep dive into the Roland FA-08 workstation. This is their 88 note key uh, station, sits uh, one level uh, just below the full Phantom series in terms of the Roland uh, model ecosystem. It's the first chance we've had to look at it. We've just done our unboxing video and now we're diving down into the trenches and really uh, hopefully getting into the hood uh, of some of these more uh, interesting, more complex features and giving you my feedback along the way. If it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate if you subscribed. Uh, it helps you stay up to date with every time we bring up a new video. Uh, and we love hearing from you as well. So please leave a comment. We'll do our very best to get back to you. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive into this beautiful instrument right away. So welcome to the full review on the Roland FA-08. This is exactly the same guts as what you're going to find with the FA-06, the FA-07, the FA-08. Literally the only difference between these uh, different models is the key, the number of keys, and the key action. Uh, this is, uh, the key action that you find on here uh, is called uh, the Ivory Feel uh, G action. Um, and I think this may have first come out when the Phantom G series hit uh, and that would have been uh, maybe like 2000 what 2007 2008 something in that range uh, not 100% sure on that but I, I believe that that's where that that action harkens from and of course that kind of developed into uh, sort of where the PHA 4 and PHA 50 uh, sit now. This actually feels a little closer to the PHA 50 action than it does to the PHA 4. Uh, PHA 50 is you know, something you're going to find on like the RD2000, you're going to find it on uh, the DP603, a lot of the HP series, a lot of the, uh, the home digitals from Roland. The PHA 4 is what you're going to find on your FP10, FP30, FP60, FP90, all of those. So this is sort of like a halfway between um, definitely we've got escapement here. It's not quite as authentic as what you can get, uh, but more or less it is, uh, it is there. So from an action standpoint, uh, the roll, this FA-08 is kind of a nice, uh, a nice blend uh, of, uh, touches of styles of action that you, uh, find sort of throughout the industry. It's a medium weight. It's definitely not light, but it's nowhere close to as heavy as what you'd find on like a Yamaha P515 these days. So I think that accommodates both a contemporary player and a classical rooted player quite well. Uh, it's probably not a classical exclusive player who's going to be looking at a workstation because I think the primary reason you buy or you get a workstation is you're doing a ton of live performance where you've got a need uh, to be driving sequences uh, and uh, you know multi uh, sound setups backing in a band or whatever it is or uh, you're somebody who uh, has figured out about themselves that the creative process the creative flow of building a song is something that just works better for you when it's in front of you in a single machine rather than manipulating a computer uh, I think that's something that should never really be underestimated about a workstation is its ability to give you a creative tool that which feels a little more, I don't know, a little more personal, a little more intimate uh, sometimes than working with a computer. Um, it's a different thing for everybody, but I definitely know that when the sequencer is in front of me uh, and it just feels like it's an integral part of the playing process, I tend to create a little bit differently than when I'm in a computer uh, and I'm sequencing in something like Ableton or Logic. I don't know why and, and I don't know whether other people out there find that, but I definitely do. So uh, I know sometimes the question of, of why workstations are still relevant today with so many software options sometimes comes up uh, it, You know, when you're talking about certain settings, especially if you're not in a live setting, like why use a workstation uh, to write at home when you've got computer and software? Well, uh, I do think there's an argument to be made that it's just a more intimate, uh, more tactile experience. Um, but getting back to the action, it's got a very subtle texture on the white key. 
uh, and also kind of a matte finish on the black key. Um, it, it reminds me, um, um, uh, to be honest, it reminds me of Kawhi's modern uh, RH3 action uh, that you're gonna find in like a CN29, CN39, uh, or the Nord Grand, which uses the Kawhi uh, RH3 action. So if that's a more helpful uh, comparison, I think it actually stands up, or it, it compares somewhat well to that. Uh, like um, most of the other modern Roland actions, the edge of the white keys is a little bit sharper. It's not quite as rounded as what you find on, uh, for example, a Kawhi, but it's still really satisfying. So just for playing piano stuff, I think it's really good. Yeah, and for e-piano stuff as well, I find it great. Uh, so those are my thoughts on the action. Uh, we're gonna get a few specs up on there for you to take a peek at, but then we're diving right into the sound engine and how you can access uh, this whole kind of world of sound uh, on, this, uh, on this FAO 8. So thank you so much for being with us, uh, and we'll be back in just a second. Let's talk about sound now. And I'm gonna keep that separate from uh, like the sampler and the sequencer, which to me uh, kind of is agnostic uh, of the sound. These are two very uh, sort of exclusive feature areas. At least that's how I organize them in my brain. Um, and uh, with the FA series, you're, they're mixing a whole bunch of different sound engines uh, within one roof. So one of the interesting things is uh, about choosing the patches on here is they really they actually tell you which sound engine is producing it and you can also uh, kind of sort and organize which patches you're playing based on whether you want to be accessing the PCM uh, sound banks or the supernatural sound, bank, sound banks. Uh, the PCM uh, stands for pulse code modulations basically like a really super well used to be a really cutting edge synthesis technology, uh, and now it's kind of considered a little more on the basic side. Uh, the Supernatural engine is something that they've developed. Uh, I know there's um, uh, Acoustic Piano Supernatural, which is kind of an algorithmic set. And then you've got E-Piano, which is also Supernatural. Uh, they've got the uh, uh, percussion and several others that are, uh, that are built in. And these are tone engines that appear in instruments right across you know Roland's line uh, and it's basically a combination of both sampling and modeling so it's it, it sort of forms uh, the core of the sound is based on a real sample but then all of the nuance and contextual changes that occur uh, around that sound uh, if you were to hear it in real life which is virtually impossible to sample in one instance um, is uh, basically synthesized and added to on top of the sample. So that gives you a lot of realism, but it also gives you way more parameters for you to edit with, uh, which I find to be pretty cool. In terms of the number of sounds that are on here, we've, you know, we've covered that it, it's uh, coming to you through a number of different tone engines. Um, but when it comes to the sheer number of patches that are available, it's pretty enormous. So, uh, and they're all organized uh, here down in the front uh, by category. So we've got drums and percussion. Um, and then we've got acoustic piano, electric piano, keyboard and organ. some bass and guitar. It's actually a really dynamic string section. That's excellent.
lots of vocal and choir stuff. Some really beautiful lush pads as well. Like a lot of workstations, one of the things that uh, these instruments give you as an option that you don't have in most stage pianos is the ability to, lo to layer up huge number of these songs or s uh, sounds at the same time. Uh, most stage pianos are going to give you the ability to do this with what, two, three, four. Uh, my RD2000, you can do it with eight. This thing you can do with 16. You could literally layer up a gigantic sound uh, full of 16 different, uh, uh, you know, sounds of every kind. Uh, split the keyboard up into different velocity layers, different key ranges, uh, so that you could really, um, I mean, the, the customization ability uh, to do this on a workstation is almost endless because you have full editing control uh, between send and receive MIDI channels, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like an, uh, yeah, you're basically working with a, a DAW software loaded right into the machine, uh, in front of you. So for people who are building really complex, uh, you know, live sets, this is a huge, uh, benefit, especially once you get really fluent with how to set these, uh, studio sets up. Um, and then your sequencer works exactly off the same architecture, basically this 16 track uh, you know, um, uh, signable environment uh, that you can then start recording MIDI data to. Uh, in terms of the sound quality, uh, I, some of these sounds are sounding a little bit dated. But it's not surprising, this 2015, 2016 product, but I would say the vast majority of them still sound just as good as the very best instruments that are available uh, today, especially the stuff that's still that's that's coming to you through the supernatural engines, because a lot of that was absolutely breaking, uh, you know, or a leading edge when it first came out, and we're only a few years into the future. Um, most of these patches sound just as good as they do in my RD2000, uh, and uh, which is really quite impressive. What I love about uh, the just the work environment is the idea of how easy it is to build a highly customized live patch set uh, because it's using that sequencer with the 16 track architecture. Uh, that opens up so many potentials, not just for uh, sequence stuff, but for live environment manipulation. Um, so. I enjoy, you know, the possibilities that just starts to come to mind. You really are, you know, feel quite creative. The ability to control this stuff live uh, is quite easy. You've got, um, what is that, five, six assignable knobs uh, plus your, uh, your kind of joystick thing over here. Uh, so you've got uh, envelope control, your EQ control, assignable, which you can literally pretty much assign to anything you want. Um, and then your uh, tone control, so like your compressor, um, your overall tone, uh, you know, warmth, chorus, reverb, uh, and then a couple of specific uh, uh, other effects controls. Uh, and as I see, it also has a really cool screensaver, because why not? Every keyboard has, needs a screensaver. Now, does this unit have any speakers or...? No, nope, no speakers on this. Like most stage pianos and most workstations, uh, they're preserving uh, weight, saving weight, saving space, uh, so that they don't put the speakers on. Uh, this really is not a huge sacrifice because Roland, Yamaha, Kawai, they know that uh, most of the time when you're using a machine like this, it's almost always in an environment where you're, uh, you've got some other sound reinforcement. Uh, you're going to be using headphones if you're just doing some of this stuff on a personal level or you're in a studio So you've got near field or midfield mixers or you're on a stage. You've got monitor. I mean um, 
it, you've got so many potential uh, other sound sources that uh, adding weight and losing space uh, hardly seems like a rational thing for them to do from a design standpoint. So um, just in case people are new to this category of instrument, uh, don't get caught uh, expecting onboard speakers. They don't have any. Good question though. So that's a quick discussion about the sound capabilities that are on this FA08. Let's get into more of the, the nuts and bolts stuff like the sampler, which is really cool. The, uh, the rhythm um, kind of module that exists as well as the in and out ports and overall connectivity. So once again, thank you so much for watching the video. Please stick with us. Uh, here's a few more specs about the sound engines up on the screen. We'll keep going right away. So besides talking about the action and talking about the sound that this can produce live, uh, a huge part of a workstation actually is what happens behind the scenes. Its ability to uh, you know, let you import new sounds through its sampler uh, and its sequencer, which is a huge part of what you can do with a workstation. Uh, I should mention that the rhythm generator and the arp, uh, you know, arpeggiator uh, is also kind of wrapped in with that whole thing. And they do lay this out in a way that uh, kind of all of your live um, uh, controls and the sound selection controls occur in this section and in this section. And then for everything uh, dealing with the sequencer and sequencer type features, it occurs over here. So they do lay this out in a way that makes it easy to understand what part of the instrument you are using at any given time. Um, I'm going to start with the 16, kind of the multi-purpose 16 uh, pad thing uh, over there. I'm sure uh, that Roland has a name for it. It's titled sampler up there, but it's so much more than just the sampler. Uh, because if you press pad utility, you get into, uh, it, well, you kind of uh, enter this first menu where you can see what's been assigned uh, to all 16 and it's arranged in four banks. Um, and so you can, uh, and I believe that those four banks also are all assigned to a particular uh, like a studio set or a song. Um, and there's a few different things you can do with each one of those. You can assign and record a sample to it. So that could be, I don't know, uh, you know, a, a really crazy uh, drum fill that happens to be the same speed as what a sequence you're doing. And you don't want to program it yourself. You just want to record it off another album and use it. Um, assuming that you have the right licensing to do so and uh, you know assign it to pad number one or pad number two uh, you could also have a vocal lick or you could have an entire literally any kind of audio sample you want in there you can record it and assign it there and it's very very easy for you to do but on top of that you can select different pad modes so if you're not going to use it for a sample pad one of the other things you can have this is be your part select. Um, so if I want to uh, select part number one, I hit part number one, it's blinking. So you can go back and forth between uh, the part select. So that makes it, it's one other way if you've got a really complex setup and you're wanting to, uh, in real time, be able to switch back and forth between sound one, two, three, four, five, uh, and you don't want to be uh, doing it through a menu, you just assign it to this and it makes it so easy uh, in real time to just call up those different patches. Another thing uh, that makes this very easy to um, uh, create a drum track effortlessly uh, is your rhythm pattern um, editor. And so this is where you can uh, select four different rhythm patterns, um, an intro and an ending. Uh, and so if you've already laid down a bass and a piano, and then you want to record <coughs> a rhythm group to this, 
it's very, very easy to do. So let's actually do just that uh, so that you can see how easy this is. All right, so loop, uh, we're gonna have the loop off and So now, if we, let's record some bass at the same time. So, So it gives you the option to quickly layer up, loop, and in real time be adjusting the types of patterns and the types of drum loops uh, that are occurring over there. So it's very visual, it's very easy to do, and I really appreciate any environment, because I'm not a drummer and I can't do that stuff very well on my own, I always love any software or any hardware that's going to make it easier for me to connect to a drum track and give me the ability to edit that. Let's talk about what is happening on the back of this machine. You've got obviously your USB in and USB out, which is pretty much standard uh, these days. You've also got um, an SD card, uh, which and it comes with a little guard here so you don't screw it up. Uh, but that's uh, for uh, sending you know sample data in and out. You've got your standard five pin DIN for your MIDI. Uh, it accommodates a triple pedal, which is also really great. So on top of being able to use a triple pedal, you can have control pedals, volume pedals, damper pedals, which we've got in here. Uh, you can also record uh, straight in from a microphone or a guitar, uh, which also makes it a really handy recording device because if you know how to play guitar, which is awesome because I don't and I wish I did, uh, or you're a great singer, which is another thing I wish I could do. Uh, it's pretty much just this for me. Uh, you've got the option uh, to take that in uh, right there as well as a stereo line in. So lots of sources uh, to get sound to that sampler, uh, which is great. Uh, and then you've got your main uh, quarter inch stereo outs and your phones uh, at the back. Um, and so those are uh, the options. It's got an arpeggiator built in as well, and uh, for people who don't know what an arpeggiator is or haven't really used one before or maybe are a little intimidated to get into it, arpeggiators are actually remarkably easy and fun uh, to use. More or less what they do is a, uh, they assign a pattern or a rhythmic pattern uh, to a chord that you are holding down 
or in some cases you can have it auto pick a chord for you even just off one note. So uh, if we have, I'm just hold, playing like a G minor seven chord and I can turn hold on so I can take it off. And all it's doing right now is it's just literally going up but we could have that go down or up and there's several different variations and sometimes you can edit those variations sometimes you can't depends on the device But they can get really fun, especially when you start to combine things like uh, delay and reverb. So, so you can sort of see how that could actually be a lot of fun. And so on and so forth. So that's a quick demonstration, uh, very, very basic demonstration of the concept of how an arpeggiator works and how you can use that to create a very interesting texture over top of a rhythm or just as a, as a, a kind of a different sonic element um, in, in a song that you happen to be writing. So let's kind of wrap this FA-08 up and, and try and summarize uh, this very, very interesting machine. So it's a workstation, it's an 88 note workstation. So a couple of pluses right off the bat. Uh, it's lighter than most 88 note workstations. Uh, for people who need portability and are gonna be uh, using a workstation in a live environment, um, that's a plus because most 88 note workstations are 70 pounds, 75 pounds. They get into some really stupid beastly weights. And this thing, is really not so bad at all. Uh, part of that is owing to the fact that it's a plastic shell instead of steel. Some of those workstations tend to be steel uh, just to make them a bit more durable, but this may not be any less durable and it's shaved off, I don't know, 15 to 20 pounds. So that's really good. Second thing, the action uh, for the workstation is a really nice blend between, it may not be necessarily the absolute top action that you can possibly find in a portable instrument, um, but as in uh, you know most things, you can't get everything uh, you want with every single instrument. Um, normally, really super great actions come with an enormous amount of weight. Uh, this is uh, kind of, from a feel standpoint, kind of a blend between Roland's PHA-4 and the PHA-50. I find it to be quite satisfying, uh, and I find it a little heavier than the PHA-4, a similar weight to the PHA-50, uh, but the response in, the key, in sort of the key action feels more like the PHA-4 with the weight of the PHA-50, if that makes some sense. Um, even though this is coming from a few years ago, uh, it, you know, the, the idea of using an instrument to control software is not new, and so this has done a really nice job of having DAW control baked right in here so you could use this setup and have several software instruments uh, in uh, you know a, a DAW environment in front of you uh, it's going to work really well. The sequencer seems pretty easy pretty straightforward to use um, so I like that. Uh, the sampler also seems really straightforward and easy to use and I love that it's got multiple sound inputs where you can uh, grab uh, the sound source for that sampler. And one final thing is cost. Uh, I, because this has been out for a little while, I don't know whether the cost has come down a little bit from when it first hit the market in 2015, 2016. Um, but for what you get, uh, this is priced 
very, very well. This is well below what you're going to be paying for the full brand new Phantom series. Uh, I think it's fairly similar to, to probably what you'd be paying for some of the higher end uh, stage pianos uh, like a you know, Kawhi MP11 or a Roland RD2000. So given all of that, I think it's, it's a, a absolutely stellar value. Uh, and like I said, the things that I pointed out to you uh, have been really a super flexible sampler, very light, uh, so great portability, really good solid action if you're used to an action with a little bit of weight to it. Not a ton of weight, but a little bit of weight. Uh, and still, you know, thousands of tone options in there uh, that give you uh, still very modern, very lush, and, and still stands up to 2020 standards in terms of the sophistication and complexity of the tone. So, hope you've enjoyed the review. Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit more about this than you knew before, and I hope you enjoy the shopping process. Uh, one of the most fun uh, things about having this station or having this you know, YouTube channel uh, is knowing that we're connecting with people who are out there getting their dream instruments and are having really satisfying, fun musical experiences at home. Those are the best comments for me to read uh, because at the end of the day, this is all about music and our mutual love of music and helping one another find new and interesting ways uh, to enjoy that music. So uh, if it is the first time to the channel, we would appreciate if you did subscribe, just hit that subscribe button. Every time we come up with one of these videos, you'll be kept informed. Uh, and leave us a comment. We do our very best to get back to every single one of you. So we'll see you back for another video shortly. Thank you so much. This has been Miriam Pianos. My name's Stu Harrison. We'll see you again next time. Fun as well.